Good evening, and it's Dr. Marvin Booker back with Bible study. Glad you can join us today, and we're here again, going to be studying back into the book of Exodus. This time, we're at chapter 37, and chapter 40 is our last chapter, so we're coming to an end very soon. Um, I pray that everything has been going well for your day and that God has continued to bless you. And again, we're trying to study in the Bible that we may get to know the Lord and even get more closer to him, to understand his character and understand how he interacts with all mankind. And the more you know about him, the more you'll understand yourself, you'll understand about your your life and how your um the reason why you're here and plus you'll you'll know your purpose in life and how you're supposed to go about living your life and god wants you to live a full life a life that's enjoyable because he would not have made this earth to be unpleasant for it but unfortunately we do have a thing called sin which tries to separate us from him and stop us from fulfilling the full potential that we have in living this life. Amen. All right. So we're going to not waste too much time. I almost got tricked uh, by the time. And I'm looking at my clock. I hadn't sat here in the office. Is at six? But my wife, Jessica, reminded me, <laughs> aren't you going to do Bible class? And uh, it's seven o'clock. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to look here in chapter 37 and again as we get ready to dive into it just reminding you how the lord is using others that are skilled that are crafted that are gifted to build what you see on the screen the tabernacle and all the things that are on the inside and the things that are on the outside and in the previous chapter remember that he called on all of Israel to come and partake in building this temple. And he only wanted the ones that wanted to give and to give freely. And as we discovered in the last chapter, they, they were so involved that they accumulated too much material to the, till they had to tell them to stop bringing, bringing all that stuff because they had more than what they needed and so that's how we bless god the people's heart would feel that and i believe when the people were involved when you get people involved they get excited about uh being involved and knowing they have something to do for a a good cause and they all have it all in common and that was serving for the lord fulfilling what god's heart wanted when God asks for something and you give him what he asks for, then he blesses you back. And so my thoughts about it is that the people were thinking that way. You know, we're going to bless our God because he's worthy to be blessed and knowing and to just to know what a person wants and know what God wants. In other words, what he wants is the biggest thing. You know, a lot of us search ourselves sometimes wondering uh, what does God want me to do what is my purpose in life and stuff and so when we do get that answer from him oh we right then and there we start feeling fulfilled and that's a wonderful thing when we look at people uh, doing for God just as much as he says he's going to do for them but he had already made the way right he had already made the way coming out of Egypt and protected them while they was in Egypt and while they came out of Egypt. And they even, uh, as they journeyed before they got to Mount Sinai, they ran across a lot of enemies. But God had promised them that he will protect them. He was guiding them by day and guiding them by night. And that's the way he does our lives. Once we become his children, that's why we call him father so much. He's going to always make sure that we are protected, that we're seeing after him, as after us, as long as we are involved with him. And when he feels us, oh my goodness, 
we got some on our hands. God is really going to be loving us with all that he's got. The more you, you cling to him, the more you uh, depend on him, the more you look to him, you seek his advice and, and seek after him. And he sees that coming from you. Oh, God really rewards those. Just like the Bible says, he rewards those that diligently seek him. So I, I tell you, I declare that uh, you should really seek God's face at all times. When the Bible says pray without ceasing, that means you're having a conversation with God. You're having thoughts about him the majority of your day. And that's what he wants. Uh, you to do is just not to leave him out of the conversation and out of your decision making in your living hallelujah so we're going to go ahead and look at uh, verse one bezalel made the ark of acacia wood and two and a half cubics long a cubic and a half wide and a cubic and a half high they're still building the temple as you can see that's why i got this on this page he overlaid it with pure gold both inside and out and made a gold molding around it so remember now this is the wood but he's overlaying it with gold gold is significant it's pure um it's something set aside and you know it's you know and it's probably more than likely it's, it's illuminating the whole room in, in, in a bright way okay he cast four gold rings for it and fastened them to its four feet with two rings in once on one side and two on the other then he made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold and he inserted the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry it okay so they're making the poles and the rings and you look at that sack and curtain and there you're going to see the ark of covenant with the the angels facing each other okay you see those poles and there was rings to be able to carry it and some of the levites were going to be assigned to carry it because they're going to be breaking down this temple and wherever the lord moves as you will find out in the in the next chapters that wherever God goes, that's where they're going to go and reset and set it back up. But they're going to be uh, different tribes uh, ascribed to how they're going to uh, set it up, break it down, set it up, break it down. It's, it's, a, it's a very organized uh, procedure when you're talking about uh, this temple. He made the atonement cover of pure gold. Okay, still talking about the, the Ark of Covenant. Two and a half cubics long and a cubic and a half wide. Then he made two cherubim, talking about those angels, which are called cherubim, out of hammered gold at the ends of the cover. He made one cherub on one end, as you see there, and the second cherub on the other end. And the two ends, he made them of one piece with the cover. Okay, that's one piece. They ain't both angels on each side as a cover for the Ark of Covenant because there's going to be some things that are going to be placed inside of the Ark of Covenant. The cherubim had their wings spread outward overshadowing the cover with them the chair faced each other looking toward the cover as you can see in the display there amen and all of this signifies everything okay they made the table of acacia wood with two cubits long a two a cubit wide and a cubic and a half high then they overlaid it with pure gold, there we go, and made a gold molding around it. They also made around it a rim of hand breadth wide and a, a hand breadth wide and put a gold molding on the rim. They cast four gold rings for the table and fastened them to the four corners where the four legs were. All right. They cast four rings for the table and fastened them to the four corners where the four legs were. The rings were put close to the rim to hold the poles used in carrying the table. All right. The poles 
for the carrying the table were made of acacia wood again and were overlaid with gold and they were made from pure gold they were made from pure gold the articles for the table the tape the the, the the shoe bread you see that table there with the with the vessel okay it's placed in dishes and bowl in its pitchers for the pouring out of drink offerings all right we covered that in the previous chapters too and all this stuff is being made because god already said how he wants it where he wants it what are you supposed to do this and remember now uh, this is lord telling moses all of these things for those 40 days and 40 nights that he spent up in the mountain these are all the instructions that he is getting from god and and that is to say if you want instructions for your life that's how much time you might have to spend with god to get those instructions to get that order from god how you if you're really interested instead of going to some some uh um, witch or some or the, what do they call them the per people that that read your palm and all that trying to find out your future instead of going to them you go to god because he best to know what route that your your life is supposed to be taking rather than somebody that doesn't have nothing but money in mind they made the lampstand of pure gold okay you see the lampstand over there on the wall to the left they hammered out its base and shaft and made its flower like cups buds and blossoms of one piece with them i could give a better picture of that that golden lampstand six branches extended from the sides of the lampstand three on one side and three on the other three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms were on one branch three on the next branch the same for the six for all six extended from the lampstand okay three on each side right and on the lampstand were four cups shaped like almond flowers with bud and blossom so they really are decorating it's not just simplified but it's also decorated and and believe me they they, they are symbolized they have meaning to them one bud was under the first pair of branches extending from the lampstand and second a second bud under the second pair and a third bud under the third pair six branches in all okay the branches and the buds and the branches were all of one piece with the lampstand hammered out of pure gold amen so i'm telling i'm saying this about the symbolism just for you to keep that in mind as you start diving deeper into your studies to well what does this mean what does the flowers mean what does the bud mean what does the blossom mean so that that's for you to dive deeper into your studies if that's what you want to do but i want to be make sure that i point some of these things out okay they made its seven lamps as well as its wicks trim wick trimmers and trays of pure gold see we hammer and we think about gold 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 they made the lampstand and all his accessories want from one talent of pure gold so when i'm saying gold i'm talking about expensiveness <laughs> you know it's nothing crappy it's, it's nothing less and like i said god wants the best so if he's our father and we are his children Guess what we're supposed to be appeasing to? Guess what we're supposed to be trying to have and do? Nothing but the best. And God only wants the best for us. They made the altar of incense of, of out of acacia wood. It's It was square, a cubic long and a cubic wide and two cubics high. It's horn of one piece with it. They overlaid the top and all the sides in the horns of pure gold and made a gold molding around it. They made two gold rings below the molding, two of each on the opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. All right. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. <laughs> OK, they also made the sacred anointing oil and pure and the pure fragrant incense, the work 
of a perfumer. All right. So we're getting all of the furnishings on the inside, as you see, right? Everything is marked, I mean, is built with acacia wood, but overlaid with gold. Now, in that last verse, the anointing all pure fragrance, meaning that God going to have it smelling good up in there, too. And we're going to find out about this, uh, about the ingredients for that uh, incense, that perfume that was being, God didn't want nobody making a duplication of it because it's sacred. It's one of a kind. He don't want you having anything smelling like it. We'll read that even later on in the context of of the scriptures. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking we will, depending on if it's between chapter uh, chapter 38 and 40, because I don't know if he's going to lead me into the other uh, three books, three books of the of the Torah. So I'm just going to leave it right here so far. So, but just to give you an idea what was going God's heart okay just to give you an idea what was on God's heart I believe that's the end of chapter 37 okay but that's that's all on God's heart what he wanted uh, requesting for the nation to uh, build him and especially for these guys that he gave the gift to um, he uses them and he uses us with the gifts that we have for him and his people. You know, we have to wonder what gifts do I have? What can I contribute to the church I belong to, meaning to the people that I'm hooked up with for God? You know, the church is, uh, we don't think about the building, you guys, and, I, and the mindset is to think about the people because the nation of Israel um here in Exodus, we can kind of look at it as the metaphor for a church. Okay, that's what God called them to be a nation that's holy, a nation of priests, as the Bible would call them. Uh, when they say priest, that means you're you're a priest serving for the people, praying for the people, uh, sacrificing for the people. And that nation is supposed to be that for all other nations who come to get to know the Lord, setting the, the template, setting the examples, setting out what God really wants to establish because really God's really main agenda, his main motive was to love the whole world and not just one nation. He had to, pl had to plant his spirit at one place to get started to be all over the place, in other words. So, we just thank God for his love and his his um, his long suffering that he has continued uh, to extend his love throughout the centuries uh, ever since Adam and Eve. That tragic incident that happened in the garden, which could have just obliterated any plans that God would have had for man. But by God's saving grace. When he found that favor through Noah, we were able to survive that flood. God started over and he had a bigger and better plan for all mankind. And look where we are. We're here in 2024. Still, God is alive and now we have access to Christ. Christ, as long as the Lord Christ is alive, we'll forever live. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I just thank God again for another Bible study. I know it was short. But I thank, thank God for those that may have, have uh, died in while I was live. I usually, again, I usually look to see who may have chimed in. We'll take a quick look. If not, we'll just move on. Nothing on display there. I may have been too quick to come on, but hey, that's the way it goes. Let's see. Nothing at White Chapel. Okay, true. Okay. Let me see some. All right. So we just want to thank God again. And if you chime in at a later time, I thank God that you chimed in. But I just also want you to remember that man does not live by bread alone, but he lives by every word that proceeded 
out of the mouth of God. I'm Dr. Marvin Booker, and we'll see you next time. Mm-mm.